Making money online, specifically on Etsy, may seem easy, or at least that's how it's often presented out there in the stratosphere of social media and all that stuff. Just like how it may be presented that it's easy to own a mansion or get that Ferrari or spend every day on the beach sipping my ties while the passive income just rolls into your bank account. So today I want to talk about the less popular dark side of selling on Etsy and owning an Etsy business. Let's go. Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the Handmade and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, LL. I'll be along with you on this journey as you start, build, and grow your Etsy business. I'm here to help you any way that I can. And I'm back with another really good episode for you guys. Uh, Not the necessarily positive episodes that I like to do, but I felt that it was really imperative to kind of talk about this again and kind of bring it to the forefront again uh, as we're rolling through this new year. And before we get started with this doom and gloom type episode, I want to give you guys a free guide like I usually like to do, give you something free to help you with your business that you can download immediately uh, and start using immediately. So this guide is how to get your first 100 sales on Etsy Um, learn what to do, specific strategies, and I mix in a little motivation for you as well. You guys can get that over at handmadeandbeyond.com front slash 100 sales. Uh, It'll definitely help you uh, as far as counteract some of the negativity I talk about in this episode, uh, which I usually try to stay away from, but uh, it's a positive guide. It's uh, there's strategies to help you right away uh, if you're trying to get more sales in your Etsy business. All right, so let's dive into today's topic in this uh, episode, the dark side of Etsy. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like I need some some really good uh, special effects to start this episode out. Uh, so I've been around for Etsy a long time. Since 2014 is when I started uh, my first Etsy shop, but I've been around the e-commerce world even longer. I've been selling online since 2000. So I learned a few things along the way, or at least I'd like to think that I've learned uh, a few things along the way. Um, I've definitely uh, failed a bunch during that time, made a lot of mistakes, uh, and I've also seen a lot of sellers fail uh, along that same time frame during their journeys. So in today's age, I think starting a business uh, or an Etsy shop or something online is a little bit different than years ago. Uh, mainly because we live in the age of social media and uh, or as I like to call it social perceptions rather because uh, a lot of what you see on there is not uh, is not really reality it's the perception of what uh, they want us to see um, but this is why I want to do this episode and talk about the dark side of selling on Etsy I don't want to be all doom and gloom but I do want to set the record straight and ground you so to speak if you just started an Etsy business or you've been doing an Etsy business for a long time. Uh, I want to set kind of the, the record straight with some of the things to look out for, pitfalls to watch out for. I just give you the right expectations going in so you can prepare yourself. A lot of what catches, catches people off guard is they aren't prepared. They don't know what's coming their way. Uh, so they get really knocked off uh, the track easy and completely derailed before they ever get started. All right, so what do I mean by the dark side of Etsy? Uh, mainly, I mean the negatives that aren't talked about enough, uh, you know, that most sellers have to overcome before they ever find success on the platform. But knowing these and being prepared for them uh, is a great step in the right direction and will definitely help you along uh, your Etsy journey. All right, so let's dive into these. The first area that I want to talk about, the first dark side of Etsy that I want to talk about is starting and running an Etsy business is not easy and it's real work. You can't just open a shop and ride off into the sunset. That's not how it works. You have to put in work. uh, You have to put in a bunch of real work. And for some reason or another, people think that an online business, starting a website, starting an Etsy shop, Uh, is not the same as a brick and mortar. It requires less work. 
uh, and they don't have to do as much work and you'll make a lot more money. That is just not the case. It still requires a lot of work, a lot of dedication um, before you will ever find success on the platform. So it's no different in a lot of ways than running a brick and mortar. Granted, yes, you can start it a little bit uh, or a lot of bit uh, more inexpensively, uh, but it still requires a lot of work on your end and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of dedication and a lot of hours on your end to put in the work. It's not any easier per se than starting a brick and mortar business. And there's that weird conception or misconception that's so easy to just do it. And then you can make just knocked over my drink. You hear that? <laughs> I'm getting all fired up. I'm knocking over my water, my drinks, probably shook the whole screen. Anyways, there's this misconception that it's easy um, and you can anyone can do it and anyone can make money. Um, so be prepared to put in the work if you're going to start your own business, whether it be brick and mortar, online, Etsy, wherever you're doing it. Secondly, and this is a tough one, this is a tough pill to swallow, most Etsy shops will fail. At least your first Etsy shop, your first idea, your first niche that you try. Uh, many Etsy sellers make no or very little sales when they first start. Uh, and then a lot of those shops end up closing pretty quickly, surprisingly. They don't, they don't even st stick around to even uh, try something else. They close their shops uh, and they never make any sales. They never find success. So there's a lot of reasons for this, and some of which I'm going to talk about in later in this episode. A lot of those reasons I've talked about in other episodes. Um, but just know there's a strong possibility that your first idea is not going to work. Your first Etsy shop is not going to work. I've had several Etsy shops fail. Several businesses fail. Several ideas fail. Not necessarily fail. Fail in terms of not working and I had to pivot to something else. So be prepared for that. Don't throw up your hands and quit and give up just because your first idea, your first shop didn't work out. If you want it to work, you're going to have to pivot and try something else. And, you know, you can only fail if you stop trying. You know, if you keep trying, you keep pivoting, you, keep, you know, you're going to find your path, you're going to find success. But a lot of people don't like to fail. It gives them a bad taste in their mouth. They, they just, it's, there's fear involved. Um, they get upset, they get distraught, and then they give up because they don't want that feeling of failure. No one likes that feeling. But that feeling is going to come if you're an entrepreneur, if you're, tr if you're trying and starting your own business. That feeling will come. The more comfortable you get with that feeling and moving past it, the better off you're going to be. The next area I want to talk about is selling on Etsy costs money. Just like any other business you may want to start, it's not free. There's fees and expenses involved inside and outside of Etsy. Uh, I see it all the time. A lot of people start Etsy shops and then they get butt hurt by the fees, uh, by the expenses that Etsy charges. You can't expect Etsy, a billion dollar company, to allow you to use their platform and get access to their 100 million plus buyers for nothing, for free. They're going to charge something. They're a business at the end of the day. So they're going to take, uh, they're going to charge something to for you to be able to use their business and access all of those buyers. Your goal is to be prepared to spend at least a little bit of money. Now you can do this very inexpensively, but you gotta be prepared for that. You gotta be prepared to pay Etsy. You gotta be prepared to uh, have expenses to buy products and make products and whether you need machinery and, and different things like that. You can do it smart, you can do it inexpensively, but there's at least gonna be some cost. You can't expect to, to spend absolutely nothing starting your own business that's just not a great expectation this is not reality so be prepared do your research know what the fees are make sure you're you're charging enough for your products uh, make sure you're not going out and buying tons of inventory before you know if your stuff's going to sell or not you can do it smart and inexpensively but just know that you're going to have to at least have some type uh you know at least be able to uh, have some type of money set aside to be able to do this while albeit it's it's not going to be near the amount of money that it's going to be to do a brick and mortar uh, or businesses like that, but it's still going to cost money. And that's why I always say too, um, it, it's always good to start your business on the side 
you're going to put in hours, you know, you treat it like a business, not a hobby and put in the hours, put in the work. But at least if you start on the side, it's a lot less stress uh, because you will have you can at least dedicate a small part of your resources from your other uh, money making avenues to dedicate to this to grow it. All right. The next thing I want to talk about, and this is something I see all the time, is your shop could get shut down or suspended if you don't follow Etsy's policies. For whatever reason, this shocks so many people. So many people get suspended and shut down and they trash Etsy and yada, yada. But the policies that they're violating are so avoidable, so blatant, you know, copyright infringement, trademark infringement, doing, creating stuff that's not handmade. Well, you're not creating if it's not handmade, selling stuff like it's eBay. Uh, so these are just blatant things that you can avoid if you take the, a couple of minutes and just make sure that you're uh, following in line with Etsy's policy and not trying to game the system. Just because you see someone else on Etsy doing it, selling a Disney item, doesn't mean that you can sell Disney items. That person's eventually going to get shut down. You as a new shop will certainly get shut down probably a lot quicker. Uh, so just avoid those things. Don't be infringing on trademarks. Don't be uh, you know, doing the things that are easy policy violations to avoid and if you're doing them and you're going in blind you're not prepared don't be shocked if your shop gets shut down and the other thing that happens too is these people start Etsy shops and then they um, they spread misinformation selling saying that Etsy's shutting down shops for no reason which makes new sellers people that want to start shops fearful and not uh, do it because they're gonna they think they're gonna get shut down even though they have something to offer the world, they have a great product that's not violating any policies. So don't listen to the people that are getting shut down saying it's for no reason. There's always a reason. And I put, uh, if I was a betting man, I would put money on it that's a counter, or uh, well, it could be counterfeit, but it's probably a trademark uh, violation type item, especially if you're a new shop and that's all that's in your shop is trademark and copyright infringed items, you're going to get shut down. There's no question ifs, ands, buts about it. So don't do it. Uh, but don't be shocked if you did do it and get shut down. Um, next, the thing I want to talk about is the fact that most shops fail, most Etsy shops fail because the seller does not take cons consistent action or put in the work. Just like I was talking about before, um, that it is real work. You got to put in real hours. You got to take real action. This is the reason that most shops failed because they don't treat it like a real business, like real work. It's not magic. You're not out there being David Copperfield and putting up five listings and think you're going to be, you know, make a hundred thousand dollars. That just doesn't work. That's not reality. You got to put in some real work uh, if you want to find success. Um, so make sure you're prepared for that. Make sure you're prepared to put in hours each and every week, preferably each and every day to find success within the Etsy platform or wherever you're selling, you got to put in the work. Next, change is inevitable. So within Etsy or running your own business, whether you're selling on Etsy or, or wherever you're at, especially with online, change is inevitable. If you don't like change, if you don't like the platform change and policies changing, uh, fees changing, you're not going to like selling online. So be prepared for change. How it is now will not most certainly 100% not be how it is next week, next month, especially next year. The company and the platform is always changing. Your business is always changing. Your customers are always changing. Your niche is always changing. You have to continue to evolve. You have to continue to be engaged with those changes. It's part of business. If you don't like that, you're really going to hate running an online business. So be prepared for that and make sure you have the right mindset and the expectation that things will change. You got to continue to learn, continue to grow, continue to evolve uh, with your business. That's just part of the deal. All right. That brings us to the last thing uh, to end this doom and gloom, <laughs> dark side of Etsy episode. It's not that dark. A lot of this stuff is obvious, but it's really important to have these the right mindset and the right expectations when it comes to this stuff. But Etsy is, selling on Etsy is delayed gratification. If you listened to me before, you probably heard me say this. I'm going to beat it into your head once again because it is really important. And it's the biggest reason why uh, shops fail. People quit. Uh, people shut down their shops. Etsy is delayed gratification. You have to work for free. Put in the hours now, just like I talked about before. 
before you ever see success or sales, success is sales, of course, on the Etsy platform. You most likely will not make money fast. You mo will most likely be months or years before you even get your first sale. All the while you're putting in hours, however many hours a week, however many hours a day in your business. So you're basically working for free while you're growing your business and not seeing that revenue come in. And that's the hardest pill for people to swallow. They want instant gratification. They want money right away. You want that Amazon package the same day or the next day. You want that instant gratification, uh, especially when it comes to selling on uh, Etsy or any other platform. If you don't get sales right away, you immediately think that the platform doesn't work. You immediately, th uh, immediately think that you're going to fail. And a lot of people aren't going to stick that out. A lot of people aren't going to deal with that for very long. But you have to. You have to continue to put in work, even more work when you're not seeing success. And that is what's going to get you over the hump. And that's what's going to lead you to success down the road. And that's what you have to remember when you're not making sales. What can I do in my business today that will help me get me closer to sales? Not, I'm not making sales. Screw it. I'm not going to do any work. I don't care. The platform doesn't work. Why would I work when I'm not making any money? That's not how, that's not how you're going to find success on Etsy. Um, but the overwhelming majority of a lot of new Etsy sellers have kind of that mindset and it's just the way the society is today. It's an instant gratification society. So you have to push through that um, while you're building your business. And that's why I said earlier, it's important to build this on the side while you have another job, preferably. Uh, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Things will get a lot more stressful if you start an Etsy business and you don't have another job. You don't have any other revenue because it takes time to build your business. Start on the side, but treat it like a business. Don't treat it like a hobby. Start on the side, treat it like a part-time business, even though you're probably not going to be making money right away. Build it up till you get to the point where you can maybe at some point step away from your other job or at least cut down to, to part-time, whatever you want to do. I built my business for four years on the side, working another full-time job. You know, I was working lunch breaks, before work, after work, uh, to build my business on the side to I, until I could get it to the point where I decided to walk away from corporate America and do it full-time because I was already making enough money to be able to do that. No way in the world would I have done that if I didn't already build my business up. Uh, no way would I have quit my corporate job to do that. So just make sure you have that right mindset, uh, that right mindset, and be prepared uh, to work for free for a while while you're building your business up on the side. But that is it for today's doom and gloom, dark side of Etsy episode. A lot of these things sh would will probably be obvious to you, maybe not. It's more of a mindset thing. Just be prepared going in. The more you're prepared to know that this stuff will happen and what you need to do to work through it, will help you continue down the path and get you closer to the success that you want to achieve as you're building your business up. But make sure you guys go and get that free guide, the 100, uh, how to get your first 100 sales and beyond on Etsy at handmadeandbeyond.com, front slash 100 sales. Like I said, it's, uh, there's great strategies in there. It's an easy read, download it for free today. And then I also mixed in some motivation to keep you guys upbeat and ready to go, ready to build your business and keep pushing forward, keep pushing that boulder uh, up that hill. That's it for today's episode. I'll be back soon with another one for you guys. Have an amazing rest of the day.